Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and it's time to make a piglin. But not just any piglin, a zombified piglin. Which of course, means we need to start with a strider. Now because my piglin is going to be riding astride the strider, I need to make sure it's got some pretty beefy little legs, which is why I've made it using the thickest wire armature I have. The rest of the body I'll then bulk up using copious amounts of aluminium foil to both reduce the amount of clay needed and to keep the weight to a minimum. Then I can mount my aluminium monster on a block and start building out the body. The last few Minecraft models I've made have been sort of a halfway point between that realistic look and the recognizable blocky Minecraft style, and I really think that's the best look for these, so that's what I'm going with here. My goal is to not deviate too far from that original design, but shoehorn in as much surface and fine detail as I possibly can. At this point, I've got a smooth two-legged red testicle with a mouth, and I'm ready to make the divots for the eyes, then drop in a couple pre-baked black beans. A selection of top-shelf wormy dealies will get wrapped around my black beans, and a series of pokes and prods via silicone shaper and ball stylus will give me my orbital ridge detailing. Then I can come back with an extra pointy silicone shaper and start to really gussy up the surface with just a whole bunch of wrinkles and creases before slapping on a pair of textured blue nitrile gloves and giving the whole surface a little pokey pokey. To make the legs, I'll wrap the wire in a thick worm of clay then slap some extra lumps and bumps onto the reverse kneecaps before using some ball styluses to add a bunch of tendons and textures on top. Then another quick blue glove texture tap and I'm ready to make the little black chunks of rock embedded in his body. I'll start by smooshing a little ball of black clay, then flicking that till it's cured solid. Then I can crumble it in my manly man fist until all that's left is a bunch of little chunks. Finally, I can take all these little chunks and place them around the base of the legs, working my way upwards with progressively smaller pieces before taking any of the leftover chunks and pressing those into the side of the Strider's upper body head thing. With the final crumbs pressed in between the larger chunks, it's into the oven to bake and I can get to work on the saddle. I'll start by making the harness that attaches to the saddle itself, which I figured would probably need a bit of extra support around the legs. In a world of perfectly cube monsters, the saddle would probably stay in place without issue, but given that this particular red gonad is somewhat rounded, it makes sense to add a bit more support. To make the main part of the saddle, I'll lay out some cling film and press a saddle-shaped blob of brown clay into the middle. Then I can trace out the edge, fold the cling film back over top, and then aggressively add some texture to the top of the saddle. Then this textured brown clay cookie can get pressed on top of the strider, and I can add some finishing details, like a slightly larger hump in the front and the back, and some straps on the side, followed by a final texturing to tie it all together, and that's the strider mostly finished, which means it's time to make a cube skull. And just like any real skull, this one starts as a cube of foil that gets wrapped in a thick layer of white clay. Once my head is the right size, I can poke a couple little eye sockets, making sure to fill only one of them in, then I can add a big pig snout onto the front. Once I've added a decent amount of the larger detail and the shape is looking good, I can poke a couple sniffing holes in the front, then get to work adding the finer surface detail. Bone is pretty porous, so I'll stab the surface with a soft nylon brush, then I can add some final surface cracks in the part of the skull that'll be visible. I've made a couple tusks off camera that I can press into place beside the snout, then once the skull's been baked to lock the shape, I can start to add my bubblegum skin. This is just some exceptionally pink pink clay that I've rolled as flat as possible using my pasta machine, which I can then press into place around the face until I've got ample coverage. I'll also make sure to rip the clay rather than cut it so the edges look as raggedy as possible. Then once I've got enough of the skull covered, I can start to add some angry wrinkles and details to the skin part of the face before coming back with my scalpel to chop out some strategically placed battle damage. Finally, some final surface detail by way of brush and silicone poker, then I can add an ear and it's into the oven to bake while I make the body. The body starts out as an extra large lump of partially chewed gum that gets squished into a somewhat rectangular blob, which then gets a big fat pig belly attached to the front. 
I'll then remove some strips of bacon from the chest and using some progressively smaller ball styluses, I'll carve out the concave chest section before triggering your trypophobia so it looks extra gnarly. Finally, I've baked some spare ribs off camera that I can then jam into place. Otherwise, I'll build up the rest of the torso by adding a big pig peck, a little belly button, and lots and lots of panel damage and wounds. Once the torso is looking good, I'll give it some more of that blue glove texture, then stick the head in place and bake the body before getting to work adding the legs. Like everything else, I'll start with some somewhat rectangular worms that I'll gently reshape so that they keep that Minecraft style, but they look a little more natural. I'll also use the bake strider to shape the legs so that I know my piglin will fit on top later. Then it's just a case of refining the shape and adding all the battle damage, exposed bones, and other zombie-related detailing. Make the hooves, I'll squish a tiny blob of clay onto the tip of the leg, then carve two little toes, poke some little toe divots, then fill each of those with some gnarly pig nails. For his piglin pants, I'll start with some simple yet timelessly stylish brown leather underpants, followed by an equally timeless brown leather skirt. This will get smooshed in place messily to showcase the quality of the build, then using my fingers and some tweezers I can mess up the edge before using a knife to add the final rips and tears. The arms undergo pretty well the same process of slightly rounded rectangles stuck to the body but with the extra thumb stuck in place. Now this is where my lack of planning came back to bite me since instead of a stick with a mushroom, the plan was to give the piglin some reins attached to the strider so I made his hands in such a way that he'd be holding them. But in the end the reins blocked too much of the strider's face so I scrapped the idea and he's left with some kinda weird not quite holding anything hands. I'm sure there's a lesson somewhere in there about planning, but at this point, poor planning is kind of a trademark of the channel and to do otherwise feels wrong. Now for his left arm, I thought a fully exposed bicep bone would look cool, otherwise the rest of the process is the same. Finally, before the last bake, instead of painting the eye socket black, I feared it would be easier just to fill the inside with a thin layer of black clay. With that, however, the sculpting is done, and it's time to get started on the painting. Now the beauty of sculpting in colored clay is that the worst part of the painting process is already finished and everything has the base coat applied perfectly. That means that all I need to do is add the shading and detail, which is actually kind of fun. Here I've gone over the entire Strider body using a nice deep red wash that will soak into the cracks and wrinkles to make them pop, then I'll give the saddle an appropriately leathery looking brown wash before giving the rocky chunks a dark grey dry brush. Once dry, the saddle gets its own light brown dry brush, then the buckles get a once over in a silver and I can give the eyes a nice shiny resin surface. Now my piglin's a little too healthy looking given that he's a zombie, so to make the bubblegum pink look a little paler, I'll paint a layer of light pink over the surface, then I'll sponge at it until it's got a nice uniform pale pink look with a slightly darker shading in the wrinkles and around the edges. I'll do the same for the exposed skull and bone but with a sepia wash sponged away and then the skirt and underwear combo gets a dark brown wash over top followed by a light brown edge highlight with a dry brush. Finally all the cracked cut and ripped up edges of the piglin skin get a gnarly green goop. Now I assume the green goop is to circumvent the age rating that having a whole bunch of red blood covered zombies would bring but I kinda like the green as a counter color to the pink of the piglin. So instead of filling the wounds with red, I'm just going to stick with a couple shades of green and make it look as moldy as possible. Otherwise, that's my painting done and it's time to make a base. Now, as far as a base is concerned, if I've got a strider and he's red, then the only option is lava. So that means I need to make some little lava rocks. I'm going to be using resin to make the lava, so I need to make a frame, but I want the base to be square so I've marked out the perimeter on a perspex sheet so that I know where I can glue my little lava rocks. Once they're in place, I give them a black base coat followed by a lighter grey dry brush to tickle the tips and bring out the sharp edges, and it's time to frame up the walls. The machine blocks will make sure my walls are perfectly straight and the hot glue will hopefully keep the resin from leaking out, otherwise I can glue my strider in place and get to making up my lava. 
I've mixed up a little cup of resin and separated into three little pots that I'll tint mostly orange with a little yellow and a little red. Then I can start pouring the resin into my mold, starting with the orange as the base and then applying the red around the edges along the rock and the yellow as the hotter section in the middle of the flow. Now it didn't turn out quite as well as I had hoped since the resin wasn't as opaque as I had wanted so the colors kind of blended together. But with ample prodding and poking as it's drying, I'm left with a pretty decent looking little rocky lava base. Now while the resin is curing, I'll add the Strider's hair tentacle dealies which I've made out of some string that I dipped in some red and off-white washes to add a bit of color. Finally, with the resin cured, I can remove the frame, clean up the edges, and pop my little rider in place. Hello. Wait, then I can put my piglin in place. However, the lack of a mushroom on a stick was bugging me, so I made a little one out of clay, drilled a hole in the saddle, and mounted it on the front. Otherwise, we are done here and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to my wonderful patrons and a special shout out to my newest patrons, Ryan S. Everest, Iden Chase, Evan G., Stram Punch, Craig Blythe, Sparkles, Andrew Valenzuela, WWPPMCC, Laser Tag Master, Ian Culverhouse, and Ben Hike. You are the spindly red lava proof legs that keep the zombie piglin of a channel safe from harm. If you have any ideas for future monstrosities, then let me know in the comments down below and well, that's it, I guess. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.